Our G35 has some dash lights on. We have a traction control, anti-lock braking system, and a low tire pressure. Now those systems are some of the best safety enhancements in decades, so it stands to reason we need to go ahead and diagnose and repair this dash light dilemma today on Tech Garage. Welcome to Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Now our Infiniti G35 has three lights on. The first light is TCS, traction control. The second one was ABS, anti-lock brake systems. Now a lot of times those two are intertwined. We'll talk about that a little bit later. What I want to address right now is that low pressure tire light or TPMS, tire pressure monitor systems. Now Brian, that's been on cars since 2007. What does it do? Exactly what it sounds like. It monitors tire pressure and alerts the driver when there's a problem. It literally does, and it's a great system when it's functioning properly. Now you think about the implications and ramifications of a poorly inflated tire. You've got increased stopping distances, you've got worse fuel economy, you've got scary cornering situations when the roads aren't in perfect conditions. Just like these systems will also tell you if your tire is overinflated, which can also introduce other performance and handling issues. So it's a critical system, not that hard to work on, but it's certainly scary when you get that light on the dashboard. Yeah, we got to diagnose this one, and here's a tip for you. You can go ahead and turn your car on. If your TPMS light's blinking, a lot of times it's a system problem. If it's on steady, it may just be air pressure. So the first place to start is checking the air pressure. And I'm going to do that right now. I'll get a demo set up. All right, so anybody can do this. I like to use the new digital gauges, because they show you scalability, they show you range in between PSI. We should have 32 to 35 here cold on our infinity. And sure enough, we've got 33, which looks really good. So now I need to go check all four corners of the vehicle and see what the tire air pressure status is. Think of this system kind of like your Wi-Fi network at home where you've got multiple devices reporting. It can get complex, but we can do this together. John's gonna help us understand exactly how it all works. Let's talk tire pressure monitoring systems. Now you may have two systems. The first one is an indirect system. How does that work? Well, it uses the wheel speed sensor just like this. Reports to the ABS unit, it spins around and it looks at all four wheels. And when a tire starts to go low, it's actually gonna speed up because it gets smaller. The computer can recognize that, bam, low tire pressure light. A second system, and the one we have, is actually a direct system, TPMS. And like Brian said, it's located right here in the rim. It's kind of like that computer network, he said. It's reporting to it Wi-Fi. It's talking to the computer. It's located right here in the rim. You can see the other side right there is on the valve stem. Now, you can have a couple different types. You can have the type that bolts in right here with the valve stem, or you can actually have a separate one here. Here's the valve stem. Here's the sensor. But once again, it's reporting back to the computer. You put it together, you're going to need some special tools. Bartek sells this whole tool set right here. If we have to change one, you got some torque specifications so you don't over tighten the bolts on there on the actual valve stem itself. You got the valve tools and everything you need to do the job. You also may have a banded sensor. Well, what's a banded sensor? It's got a huge hose clamp right here and this is going to go around the entire rim and then the sensor sitting right there. But you know what? It does the exact same thing. It's just located in the rim itself. So if you're ever taking a tire off, be careful with one of these tire pressure monitors. It's very easy to damage them when you're changing the tire. Now Brian's going to take this and shoot all the tires and they're going to report back to him either I'm talking or I'm not talking. If he has good tire pressure, this will be his next step in the diagnostics. Let's see how he's coming along. Well, we have checked the tire pressure at all four corners. It was pretty good. Passenger side rear was a little bit low, but not enough to cause this alert. So the next step was to go around and validate that each TPMS sensor is functioning properly. We're using the scan tool, the Bartek 400. This thing is an awesome tool. You can find various other types that can do this for you. And frankly, in your toolbox, you should have one of these because at some point on today's modern vehicles, when you rotate tires, you're gonna need to do this. So we just follow the prompts. We locate that scan tool right down on the other side of the wall from that sensor and just follow the prompts. So I select Infinity G35 2007. It finds it, press test. We're gonna go ahead and hold it right there. Now again, of all the tools you've got, a good scan tool for this purpose is gonna be invaluable. So let's see how we fare right here. It's retrieving the data. Let's see what we got. 
So we've got sensor failure detected. So we need to press test and we're entered to continue. So what this means is this TPMS sensor is not reporting back. That would certainly cause our light on the dashboard to come on. So I'm going to get this wheel off, head up to Chase at the shop at the tire machine where he can swap out the sensor and we'll see if that solved the problem. And then after the break, we'll dive into the bigger issue of the ABS light. So stay with us on Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Edelbrock, the most respected name in performance. Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Advanced Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. Well, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Tell you what, we're making progress on our TPMS failure here. Now, here's a look at what Chase had to go through to get that TPMS sensor switched out. You got to have the right tools for the job. And this isn't for everybody because you want to make sure that's seated properly and it's going to be reporting properly. So, I've got the rim back down here on the car. I'm just going to snug up the lug nuts here. We're going to come back and torque them appropriately later. And I'm going to go ahead and get the Bartek 400 back out. And right here, I've got the valve stem. There's the new sensor right on the other side. So I'm going to follow my prompts. Same thing, Infinity G35, 2007. And yes, we want to go ahead and delete the previous data. Now it's sending the frequency in to wake up that new sensor. And let's see if it finds it. There we go. There's the sensor reading. Remember before it said it didn't have any activation at all. So we know that it sees the sensor. The sensor sees it. So we've at least addressed this problem. We've got greater issues, though, we've got to deal with. Remember that ABS light? So John's going to dive into that while I go around and relearn all these wheels and where they are in their place on the vehicle on that Wi-Fi type of system that we talked about. So let's see what John found. Now, ABS, anti-lock braking systems. What is it and how does it work? Well, our friends at ATEC sent us an ABS trainer, everything right here on the board, wide open for your view and pleasure. Let's get started. Each one of the wheels have actually a tooth ring and a wheel speed sensor. You can see each one of them right here. And what happens is when you take off, the tooth ring's gonna spin and the actual magnetic pickup of the sensor is gonna pick up a signal. It's gonna report back to the computer and I can show it to you in action. I go ahead and I push the gas pedal here and here we go, seven, eight, nine, 10. As the wheels speed up, it's reporting. Everybody's happy, 10, 10, 10, 10 across the board. Now, when we go to stop, if I hit the brakes and they all stop together, that's fine, nothing's gonna happen. But if I hit the brakes and one of the wheel speeds change versus the other ones, the computer's gonna take over. It's gonna take the hydraulic unit and it's gonna get that wheel under control to match the other wheels or it's gonna run to you come to complete stop and that's how ABS works. Now our code on our Infinity is a C1103. That's a right front wheel speed sensor open. Well, what does that mean? That means the computer's getting no signal from that right front wheel speed sensor. And a couple of tests that you can make, we're gonna make them right here on the board and show you what's going on. Our right front wheel speed sensor is located right there. So the first thing I want to do, Advance sent this UEI oscilloscope. An oscilloscope reads live electricity and we can actually see the signal. It's going to produce an AC signal. So I'm going to come across here for a second, plug in a connector here so we can get to the terminals. And you can see up here I actually have no power going to it whatsoever. And I'm just going to take the oscilloscope and I'm going to put one lead on each side of this connector here. So what's happening is it's gonna generate its own voltage, an alternating current or an AC voltage. So watch the oscilloscope. As I start to push the gas, you can see the signal. Now, seven, eight, nine, 10 miles an hour. The faster it goes, that AC signal starts to get closer and closer and closer. Looks at all those signals, and if all those signals are the same, he's fine, he's not gonna do anything. But if one of them changes, that's gonna represent a speed, it's gonna go ahead and get that wheel under control. Now, a test that you can make right out in the driveway. A lot of us have a DVOM or digital volt ohm meter. I'm gonna hit the brake here and stop it, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna switch the leads here to my DVOM. This is a little bit simpler. Maybe some shops would use the oscilloscope method to look at some of the problems on the system. This one here, we could run two tests with this. 
we can check an ohmic value, ohms of resistance of the sensor. Real simple to do. Take your DVOM, go across the sensor, no power set up to it, and you can look at the sensor. We have a number right there. You're going to have to check your service manual because they're all a little bit different. Now also, you can look at that AC voltage just by spinning your wheel. Watch this. We're going to go over to AC voltage, a little bit different. Cars use DC 90% of the time, but these are AC. I'm going to go ahead and spin that, and you can see we're producing a voltage right there. So if you're spinning a wheel and you're producing a voltage and you have an ohm value, your wheel speed sensor is probably in pretty good shape. We'll have to find out what Brian found out with his test so we can get our infinity back on the road. Well, as always, access is one of the biggest challenges. There's the ABS wheel speed sensor on its way to the computer. We're interrupting that connection. We want to do one step, one final validation here that this is the problem. So with your DVOM, remember in ohms mode like John showed you, you want to test this connector. I get down in here and get access and we've got no resistance. I'm making good contact, no resistance in the line. That's the validation I need to know this is actually the problem. So when we come over to our new BWD sensor, we actually got a little rig set up here for you, a little demo so you can see that when I put the new connectors in, just alligator clips will do it if that's what you've got on your DVOM. You're going to see ohms of resistance on your DVOM. That validates this sensor is working properly. So keep in mind, this is a wheel bearing type of integral wheel speed sensor. There's a lot of different types. John's got more on that. Now a couple more tips for you. Those tooth ring sensors can be located in different locations. It may be integral right here with the whole sensor itself in the bearing. In that case, just replace the whole bearing, plug it in, you're good to go. But it may be located on a rotor. You can see it would be pointing in right here, touching the rotor. That's why if you go down to the parts store, they ask you ABS or not ABS because it may have the ring or not. Same thing with a CV axle, a constant velocity joint. Maybe reading it right here on the end of the CV axle. May have it, may not. You got to know your make, model, and specification. Last but not least, you may be reading right here on the differential. This is actually the carrier. It's going around and it's spinning and it's picking up that signal. Now remember, this thing's a magnet. So you're going to get a lot of metal and debris on here. Pull it out, clean it off, make sure your differential fluid's clean, and you'll get a good reading every time. Also, there's an air gap. So make sure the air gap set correctly. If it's too far, it's not going to read. Too close, it's going to short out and touch. So you don't want that to happen. Well, Brian's verifying the repair. Let's check in with him. So let's validate the repair. But I see a wireless OBD2 connector hanging in there. Hey, John, you trying to talk to my car? Brian, way ahead of you, man. I'm sitting in here and I'm going through the codes. I got them on here with the key on. You got, give me some help. I'll go ahead and clear it. That codes are cleared right now. Now the best thing we can do is go ahead, crank it up. Let the ABS run through a cycle. And it was a hard code. All right, there so read go. codes. Nothing's popping up. It probably cycled. It was a hard code, which means it was open. It probably would have kicked it right away, but a test drive wouldn't hurt. Yeah, dashboard looks great. I think we're ready for the road. We are ready for the road, but you know what? We took our project RSX Resurrection out for a drive, and as good as it looks, we have a wheel bearing problem. So we'll address that when we come back with more Tech Garage presented by Advance Auto Parts. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Now we got our project RSX Resurrection in the shop and we suspect a wheel bearing. But I can give you a few tips before you go ahead and do your wheel bearing that you can do right out in the driveway. You can take your car and you can drive it along. You can shift to the right and to the left and you can see if the noise changes, loading and unloading the bearing. That'll give you an idea what side it's on. You can also determine if it's a tire or a wheel bearing by simply changing road surfaces. If I change road surfaces and the noise goes goes away, it's most likely a tire. If the noise stays the same, it's probably a bearing. You can also go down to the auto parts store. You can get you an inexpensive stethoscope like this here. Just simply just put it on, take it down to the bearing and spin it and see if you got any noise, growling, rumbling in there. But keep in mind, we're unloading all the weight, so it may go away. You may need the weight of 4,000 pounds to make that happen. Foolproof way is a dial indicator. I actually got one hooked up right here. I'm on the side of the bearing. I'm going to read a lateral run out. I'm going to reach down here to the axle and I'm going to spin that bearing. And when I spin that bearing, we're watching the dial. And you can see it's bouncing to about a thousand. 
Really, that's about it. This one has about no play at all. But either way, if you suspect some growling or some noise or have some lateral run out, you want to address it immediately before it turns into this mess right here. This bearing didn't go too far. This thing fell apart. It shredded. And we don't want that to happen to our newly painted RSX. So Brian's underway right now diagnosing ours. All right, well, it's possible we discovered the growl in this driver's side rear wheel bearing under, let's call it some severe duty driving while John and Chase were busy in the shop one day. Don't forget, we're trying to get the RSX ready for some track days, maybe some autocrosses. So we want every bearing at every corner true and in really good shape. So I validated that with the mechanic stethoscope John showed you. Worked like a champ. Put it on the housing right back here. Spin this assembly a little bit and you can definitely hear the growling in there and it said, okay, time to be changed. Now, got the rotor off, got the caliper off, hung it up with a bungee, no tension on the brake line, we're in good shape. You may need an air impact gun. I'm gonna try this DeWalt battery powered gun. There's also a stake in the nut here. I tapped it with a flathead screwdriver, backed it up out best I could. I'm gonna try to hit this and if we get a little bit lucky, we'll go ahead and break it loose. Sometimes it is better to be lucky than good. So, this old hub assembly should come right off with a little bit of encouragement. There we go. So you can't see any obvious wear on there, but clearly it needs replaced. Now, the Moog Problem Solver hub assembly makes this so easy. It's a sealed unit. If you've ever been the guy to try to seat these bearings down in there and the seals, it's a pain. This guy's ready to come on. I'm just checking for burrs. No issues here, everything's clean. We're gonna work it right back up and on. A Little bit of wiggle and encouragement. There we go. You gotta use the same nut to go back on. I'm gonna get it started. Now, just run it back down, get it snug. Now take a look at this Moto Logic graphic. It calls for 134 foot-pounds. I can't achieve that with that impact gun. So, gonna have to do that the old fashioned way, you know, with big boy torque wrench, pry bar, I'll hold it in place. I'll get that seated. Most importantly, drive that stake back down in so there's no way that nut can back off. I'll get this all buttoned back up, the rotor back on, the caliper back on. I'll tell you what, this thing's gonna be fun to drive. So, when we come back to Tech Garage, presented by Advanced Auto Parts, John is down at Bernie's Speed Shop and they're talking tires. Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts, is being brought to you by Edelbrock, the most respected name in performance. Evapo Rust, super safe rust remover. Steel Rubber Products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by Advance Auto Parts. Well, our performance playbook's all about tires. Josh, I think there's no tire pressure monitors inside of these tires. They wouldn't hold up to the condition, and you don't need them. How do you adjust for tire pressures? We actually use this tool called a track meter, and what we do is we essentially stand on it on the pavement surface of the racetrack, and when it breaks loose, the style indicator will tell us how much stickiness we actually have on the track and that determines your tire pressures. What kind of tire pressures do you run? Anywhere between six and eight PSI. Six and eight PSI. Now, passenger car, 32 PSI. You got a new tire and an old tire. Tell me the difference. This one is a match set that's ready for testing. This one is a used tire after approximately 10 runs. And a used tire gets chunked, and you really only run on a little bit of surface. How much do you run on? Uh, approximately 14 inches is all that makes contact with the racetrack. That's it. Wow, time for that. What do these numbers mean? You got some numbers on here. Um, just to make sure that they're wearing properly, we measure the circumference. And then they get smaller and it's time to wear out. Yes, sir. Awesome. I'll tell you what, John's back in the shop and we have to deal with some traction control and stability issues when it comes to performance cars. We'll talk to him about it. In the performance field, the ABS and traction control issues will come into effect. It will come in and as soon as you see tires slip or something like that, it'll start pulling timing out, adding fuel and making the car not behave will not be putting down 100% of the throttle. 
When you start going to aftermarket wheels, uh, you want your TPMS sensors in there. We uh, take them out, put them into new wheels, recalibrate them, and you're good to go. With the air ride system installed in this, there's no effects on the braking system or the TPS or any of that computer lingo that is going to be a detrimental to the vehicle. Check in next week for another performance playbook here at Bernie's. Now let's head back to the shop for the email question of the week. John Jim from Greentown, Ohio emailed this week and he's got a 2012 Chevy Express van that he says has a growling noise coming when he applies the brakes on dirt roads. He looked at the brakes, just visual inspections, they look pretty good. What are your thoughts? Well, two key words there, Jim. Growling noise. ABS units tend to make a growling noise. It may be normal. The other giveaway is the express van. I mean, that thing's a huge echo chamber. I'm going to plug this one in and let you hear it. This one's pretty quiet, relatively speaking to other ones. But you can actually hear that motor run. Now strap that to the bottom of a ginormous echo chamber. Mm -hmm. The dirt roads, you're going to get some growling. Now we saw those patterns earlier. And take a look at this graphic. This is what the computer is looking at with your van there, Jim. The right front, the left front, and the left rear are all great. But that right rear starts slowing down. That's what it's going to see. It's going to pulse the wheels. You're going to hear that growling sound. Probably normal, but a good idea to check those brakes as well. Yeah, absolutely. You talk about ABS, you talk about TPMS, two of the better safety enhancements in modern day vehicles. And I'll tell you what, our TPMS project wasn't hard, but there's a lot to consider these days when you're swapping these out. That's for sure, yeah. We went ahead and programmed it with the Bartek rotating tires. If you ever rotate your tires and you got an enhanced dash, which means it shows you where the wheels are in the yeah. position, you have to relearn it. <laughs> that happened to me. I actually looked at my dash. It said the right front was low. I rotated the tires. I'm sure you do as well, Jim. When I rotated the tires, it was in the back. So actually, the back tire was flat because I didn't relearn it. Very important piece of the puzzle. Got to do that. And I know your car, guys, and I know you're rotating your tires. So make sure you understand any type of TPMS scan tool is a great great tool to have when you're doing those projects. Hey, come join us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And like always, thanks for watching Tech Garage, where we get you back on the road. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.